rappers in Jacksonville don't just make up stories for the clout. This new generation of artists has gotten famous for rapping about real beef and crimes going on in the city, including shootings, murders, robberies, kidnappings, and more. Let's take a look at some Jacksonville rap lyrics that actually happened. Corbin got kidnapped, they found his bones where he was rot. Where is Corbin? Fulio Beatbox Remix. Jacksonville rapper Spot Em Got Em blew up with the track Beatbox in 2020. It was remixed by a ton of major names in the game, including Spot Em Got Em's homie, Fulio, who dropped his own version of the viral track, where he name drops a bunch of real people from Jacksonville, including a dude named Corbin who was killed during a kidnapping. Corbin Johnson was an 18-year-old from Jacksonville whose remains were found by police after he'd been missing for exactly a year and was last seen by his mother. On the day he went missing, he FaceTimed his friend and told her he was going to apply for a job at Amazon. His father confirmed that he had dropped him off for the interview at Amazon, then drove him to UPS to apply there as well. Corbin's father then brought him to his mother's house in Biscayne Circle after the job interviews. His father sent him a text the next morning, but didn't get a response, which he said was unusual. After the family did not hear from him for 48 hours, they officially filed a missing persons report. For about a year, the case went cold and police had no leads on what might have happened to Corbin. Until just about a year later, a man was clearing some land with a tractor in the northwest side of the city. He uncovered what looked like human remains that had been wrapped in either a plastic bag or a tarp. By that point, the body had already decomposed and all that was left was the bones, but it was later confirmed that they belonged to Corbin Johnson. The police had little evidence to launch an investigation and his murder remains unsolved. The word on the street is that Corbin was set up by a girl he knew who sold him out to the ops. They kidnapped him over a drug debt that one of his homies owed, and when they refused to pay up, they killed Corbin and disposed of his body. This is an unconfirmed rumor, but would explain why he suddenly went missing. Fulio has mentioned Corbin several times, including once on Instagram Live, where he claimed that his worst fear was ending up like Corbin. Man, that, hey, that Corbin real deal got kidnapped, bro. That's, that's my worst, biggest fear, bro. It doesn't seem like he had anything to do with Corbin's disappearance, even though he talked about him in a song. Unless, he's just trying to make it look that way. In a different song, Fulio raps about one of his childhood friends who ended up catching a murder charge because he wasn't covering his face with a mask. No face caught life because his ass ain't wearing a mask. Never cared, Fulio. No face, aka Cracker Jack, was one of Fulio's day one homies. The two had known each other since at least middle school and came up in the streets together. But while one would go on to become a famous rapper, the other would be sentenced to life in prison after the murder of 22-month-old Aiden McLendon. In January 2016, No Face and another associate went to take out a man named Reginald Williams. Williams had just been dropped off at his house by his cousin, Tamisha Brown, who was driving a car that also contained Aiden McClendon and his great-grandmother. Just after Williams got out of Brown's car, he approached another vehicle, but then turned and walked away. As he turned around, shots started going off. The shooters missed Brown, but they ended up hitting Aiden in his car seat. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition and later passed away. His death was a major shock to the city of Jacksonville and forced the police to crack down on gang violence in the city. About a week later, police pulled over Henry Hayes IV, aka No Face, while he was driving his father's car. They discovered a 9mm pistol and later determined that it matched the murder weapon that had killed Aiden. So just a week before his 17th birthday, No Face was arrested and charged with first degree murder and two counts of attempted murder. Police also arrested a second suspect named Kwame Richardson, who they believe also shot at Williams on the day of Aiden's murder. Tamisha Brown later testified in court that she recognized No Face as the killer because Kwame was wearing a mask. She told the court, I heard large pops, I paid attention to the person I could see because he was hanging out the window with a gun. She said that she saw Kwame first, but he was wearing a mask, so she didn't pay close attention to him because she couldn't see his face. Instead, she focused on No Face, who was leaning out of the car with no mask and both hands on a 9mm. Both men were found guilty of the murder and sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Aiden McClendon. In this bar, Fulio is talking about how his childhood friend, might have beat the case if he was wearing a mask, but he got sloppy and a one-year-old tragically lost his life. But if you thought that was wild, Fulio also disrespected an op named Big Baby who got shot and killed at a bus stop. Big Baby caught at the bus. Fulio dropped out of high school in the ninth grade after he was shot while getting off the school bus. He got shot because earlier that day, a dude from a rival gang named Big Baby had been killed while waiting for the bus. In December 2014, Big Baby was waiting for a bus near 13th Street and Canal Street around 6.30 a.m. A family friend said that she had dropped him off to go to school just minutes before he was killed. Neighbors reported hearing as many as 15 shots, and police later found at least 12 shell casings at the scene. By the time authorities arrived, Big Baby was already dead. Big Baby played football at the local high school and was well known and loved by many people in the community. Fulio went to the same high school, but was in an op neighborhood. Everyone at school thought Fulio had something to do with Big Baby's murder because their two gangs had beef. On a live stream with Aiden Ross, Fulio talked about that day. He said that he had nothing to do with the murder and was on his way to school when it happened. But kids at his school still thought that Fulio was the killer. 
So when I went to school, everybody was walking up to me, but they say you had something to do with such and such dying. I'm like, bro, what the f how? When I was on, I was really the only way to school. Like the yeah. police, the police came and interrogated me about the shit and all. Like when I was in the hospital, shot. So boom. It got so bad he was about to fight three different people. Then he ended up getting on their bus, even though he had smoked with almost everybody. He ended up getting off in an area called Aaron Drive. When he got off the bus, he sat down to roll up some weed. But while he was rolling up, someone pulled up and shot at him. He got up to run away, but ended up getting shot in the hip. He saw the shooter was still going after his friends, so he decided to army crawl away. He managed to make it to a random lady's yard and asked for help, but the woman wasn't having none of that and told Fulio to get out of her yard. He told her he was shot, but she didn't care and still told him to get out. So he decided to play dead on her lawn until the shooter was gone. He eventually made it to a hospital and had to have four surgeries to repair his hip. The police interrogated him about Big Baby's murder while he was recovering, but later cleared his name. After that, Fulio never returned to high school because he felt it was too dangerous. He and rappers he's affiliated with, like K-So, would often diss Big Baby in their music, the same way rappers from Chicago diss Tuca and Lil Mark, who also died while waiting for a bus. So he may not have had anything to do with the murder, but his ops still aren't happy about the constant disrespect of their dead homie. But Fulio isn't the only one to rap about real situations going on in Jacksonville. This next rapper brought up the death of one of Fulio's close homies, Rod K. Rod K died because he freezed up. Spinna Benz is a rapper associated with Young and Ace and his ATK gang. He was featured on the famous Who I Smoke song, which is a murder anthem dedicated to disrespecting dead friends and family members of Fulio and his gang. But that wasn't the only time that ATK has taken shots at Fulio and his music. On this track, Spinna Benz disrespects rapper Rod K, who was shot and killed outside the Hilltop Apartments in November 2020. Rod K had just started to build a buzz with tracks like Strap Story and Hot Boys. It seemed like he might be the next rapper from Jacksonville to blow up, thanks to his emotional rapping style and his affiliations with Fulio. But before he could reach his full potential, he was tragically murdered. On November 20th, 2020, police responded to a call about gunshots being fired in the parking lot of the Hilltop Village Apartments in the Moncrief neighborhood of Jacksonville. Paramedics arrived and found two gunshot victims in the parking lot. At first, it seemed like their injuries were not life-threatening, but Rod would later pass away after being brought to the hospital. Rod K's death came just a day after the murder of another KTA affiliate who went by the name Spaz2X. Spaz was also killed in the parking lot of the Hilltop Village Apartments, leading police to believe that the shootings were related. There are several theories about what happened to Rod K. Some say that he went out looking for the person who killed Spaz and the ops got the drop on him first. Others claim that he was even set up and backdoored by his own people. Whatever happened to Rod, it's no surprise at this point that Fulio's enemies would use his death to taunt him. Spinner Benz not only name drops Rod K on the song, he also makes a reference to him on Who I Smoke in the line, 12 paramedics couldn't save your f***ing life, boy. Plus, he also threw a shot at Rod K on the track Drill Time, where he raps, I told y'all Rod K was dead before his body had got found. In Jacksonville, nothing is off limits, and both sides have used each other's dead homies to get at their enemies, even if they had nothing to do with the hit. That's probably part of the reason that violence has gotten so out of control and rappers continue to lose their lives and freedom. But Spin the Benz isn't the only ATK affiliated rapper to take shots at the ops in his music. This next rapper bragged about stealing a verse from a KTA affiliate who had recently been killed. I just stole a verse, he dead, and can't come back. In this bar, K So is throwing shade at Tiki, a rapper affiliated with Fulio, Soldier K, and Trey D. Tiki was killed on May 7th, 2019, after a shooting that occurred on the 5900 block of Cristobal Avenue, which is just north of the Hilltop Apartments where Rod K and Spaz 2X died. Two innocent bystanders noticed Tiki bleeding and helped move him to Lila Street to wait for the police. Near the scene, they also found an SUV riddled with bullet holes. Tiki would later die from his injuries. Before his death, Tiki was a well-known rapper in the area. He appeared on a song called Crunch Time with Fulio and others back in 2016. In the song, he drops the bar, I'm back where it's at, in all black with a Mac, I'm the type to run off with a nigga sack. After Tiki was killed, K-So dropped the song Bang It Out, where he jacks the exact bar, followed by the line, I just stole a nigga verse, he dead, he can't come back. He can also be seen watching the Crunch Time video on his phone to make the reference even more obvious. So, K-So is not only disrespecting the dead, he was stealing his dead ops bars and then admitting to it in the same verse. If that wasn't disrespectful enough, K-So can also be seen wearing a jersey with the name Bibby on the back in different parts of the video. Bibby was the younger brother of Fulio, who was also killed in 2019 outside the Hilltop Village Apartments. Both Bibby and Tiki would also be referencing the chorus of the famous Who I Smoke song, bringing the disrespect of the dead to new levels. K-So would eventually be arrested for Bibby's murder, as well as the murder of another KTA-affiliated rapper named Lil Buck. He's currently fighting both cases. So shouting out dead ops and songs, especially when it comes to murders you may have been involved in, probably isn't the smartest thing to do from a legal standpoint. But the war in Jacksonville has gotten out of control and both sides are guilty of getting payback and then bragging about it in the music. 
These are just a few of the wildest references to real events that happened in Duval County.